Oh, what is up? Welcome to Bringing the Backups. I'm your host, Eric Helwig. On the show today, we're talking Charlie Fry. And my guest is fucking not here, baby. Solo episode. I'm on the road. I'm in Akron, Ohio, which means, you know, you're getting a little bit of the bare bones this time, huh? Just me. Just me and you. And Mandy Schmieder also does the one pre-planned bit uh, that this show will have. Usually there's three. Today there's one. Uh, You know, if that's upsetting to you, then turn it off, baby. It's just me talking for almost an hour. But Mandy does drop in. Mandy's very funny. You can follow her at Mandy Schmieder on all social media accounts or just visit her website, MandySchmieder.com. Uh, yeah, it's a great show. You know, I'm in Akron, so we're talking Akron. We're talking Cleveland. We're talking the funny stop in Cuyahoga Falls. Cuyahoga Falls? Cuyahoga Falls? Who knows? But the funny stop is great. Did some spots there. I'm going to be talking about being in a club again, doing stand-up. Friends that I've met since I've been out in Cleveland. I'm going to give a little shout-out to the Erie Street Kitchen. You don't want to miss... My shout out to the Erie Street Kitchen. And I want to, as always, encourage you guys, if you're liking the show, please subscribe. Uh, Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcast. Tell your friends about the show. Write into the show, Comedy at gmail.com. And write a review if you're on iTunes or Apple. Look at this one I just got. The, this is the PGC wrote, title of the review, one of the funniest sports podcasts there is, Fire Emoji. The review itself. This podcast is nothing but pure entertainment and fun from the beginning to the end of each episode. Great interviews with great guests, funny but true takes, and hilarious bits that no other podcast does. Give this pod a listen and a sub. Woo, baby! If the PGC was here, they would be pleasured by me. That is how you write a review, people. If you're liking the show, review it on Apple Podcasts. Throw your favorite pre-planned bit in the review. Let me know what you think. I love getting feedback from fans. I got a little bit on the weekend, and if you listen to the show, you're going to hear me trash the people that reviewed the podcast for me. All right, that's enough. It's a solo episode, so you're hanging just with me. Enjoy it. Start the show. This is Bringing the Backups with Eric Helwig. Oh, yeah, baby. We're starting a podcast. Hell yeah. Welcome to Bring in the Backups as I fade out my intro music. I am in Akron, Ohio, people. I'm calling you live from the Golden State. Not the nickname. I don't know what Akron's famous for. I know the city I'm in uh, is uh, the Rubber City because they used to make tires here, but they haven't made tires here for a long time. Um, and in driving around the neighborhood that I'm airbnb it looks like the only thing they're making in Akron is meth currently. Uh, I'm just kidding. Akron's great. Birthplace of LeBron James. Uh, Excellent political figure in our time. Also plays basketball. We, uh, or say we, I got here. Why do I always do that? I always say we. Well, what is that about? I think it's because, like, when you say we, it makes it sound like there's a team of people working to just keep your career going. Let, let's let's be clear. I need your guys' money. I have not hired a team. It's me. I paid for a plane ticket to get my ass to the East Coast, spend a little time with the fam in an undisclosed location on the East Coast. That's right. I can't trust you to not hang outside the homes of the people I love, all right? This is what happens when you have... 300 to 350 people listening to your podcast is you just don't know. It only takes one of you to go fucking Joker. The Joker, I don't know. I I really, when I watched the Joker movie, I liked it a lot. And I was with my wife who was just rolling her eyes the whole time. Like she hated it. And then afterwards, she did one of the best jobs anyone's ever done in convincing someone who enjoyed a movie that they shouldn't have. Like I got to give credit to my wife. She really talked me out of the good time that I had watching Joker. Because the movie ended, I was like, that was, that was one of the best movies I've seen all year. But about two hours later, I was like, I want to murder the people that made this happen. No, it's true. She actually did make very good points about... But the movie is like, I feel like that movie's cotton candy. Like, if you go in expecting it to be super deep, it was kind of like a- advertised as super deep. It's not, but it is like a fun... You know, it's the Joker. He's dancing... 
There's some fun musical scores. Joaquin Phoenix is a great actor. Why the fuck am I talking about the Joker? I don't know. I feel like I changed subjects like 35 times at the beginning of this podcast. Let's let's get on track. All right, I'm in the Rubber City Comedy Festival right now. I mean, by the time you're listening, this is done. I'll be back. I'm actually flying back in to L.A. on Tuesday. When I started this podcast, I you know, it was quarantine, right? But fucking quarantine is done, motherfucker. I've been to parties. I've been not wearing a mask. I've been talking too close to people. I'm a close talker, probably spitting in their mouth by accident. I mean, it's over. It's done. Even my friends in L.A. who are, like, falling in love with their masks, like they're getting, like, fucking Stockholm Syndrome with a piece of cloth over their face. I love my mask. I haven't gotten sick in, like, 14 months. I was like, I can't handle people that feel that way about their mask. Jeez, just moved to fucking North Korea. Like, what? We got to be done. Guys, I, I'm as happy as I've ever been doing this podcast. I've been doing stand up in Ohio. Live audiences, human beings listening to my jokes and responding in laughter. No Zoom comedy. No, not getting laughs on a punchline because someone started skimming Pornhub in the middle of my setup. I mean, my God, I did a club last night. Funny stop in Cuyahoga Falls. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Cuyahoga? Cuyahoga? Some some place in Ohio. An actual club spot, man. It's been awesome. Yeah, it's been awesome. Let, let's talk a little bit about this show, okay? You guys, I know you guys are used to your pre-planned bits, right? I always give you three. Well, this show, you're only getting one. We're doing a stripped-down version of the podcast today. And uh, that's because I've... Uh, I just don't want to do more. That's why, okay? You don't always get what you want. I didn't like half a million people in India die of coronavirus as I was finishing this sentence. I think you can handle having one pre-planned bit for an episode. You get one. You get uh, my friends and family coming up later. Mandy Schmieder, uh, actress, writer, uh, very talented lady. She uh, she drops in on uh, my friends and family, so you can look forward to hearing her. And then, like, I will do, like, I'll break up, you know, because we're talking Charlie Fry in this episode. He's an Akron Zips quarterback, played for the Cleveland Browns, a local Ohio kid. I figured this is the backup quarterback for this show. He's the quarterback we needed. They named a day after him in Akron. That's how awesome he was here. But, yeah, we're going to talk Charlie Fry a little bit later. Mandy's going to come on. But, yeah, it's a stripped-down show, all right? So just, you know, adjust your expectations. A lot, of you, a lot of you are, you know, you're really into the bells and whistles of the show. You love those pre-planned bits. You love my wife Liz coming on and being funny. Well, none of that today, all right? It's just me, my voice. You get no music. <laughs> you get no breakups. You just hear me heavily breathing into a microphone, trying to remember ideas I loosely said. Oh, yeah, I mentioned that. I actually met a uh, I met a fan of the show when I went back home. You out there, Mike? You listening, Mike? Ran into him through some uh, some mutual acquaintances, and then Mike told me he hates the pre planned bits. What kind of joyless son of a bitch doesn't like the pre planned bits on my show? That's like one of the best parts, according to most of you. But this asshole is like, dude, you got to knock it off with those bits. I mean, they're kind of growing on me, but like, just stick to the sports. Okay, nobody else likes the sports part. I don't know what to say. If people disagree with Mike and they want the pre-planned, I mean, he's going to love this show. I don't have any pre-planned bits except for the the Mandy thing. So good on you, Mike. Enjoy that. But for the rest of you, if you want those pre-planned bits coming back at you, which they probably will, but I don't know. It's obviously easier not to make them. So if you really want them, you know what to do. You can email me, erichelwoodcomedy at gmail.com or even better, Go on Apple Podcast, review the podcast, and put your favorite pre-planned bit in the review. Review the show. That helps a lot with getting new listeners, which we obviously need. If we're going to take over the world, make an Eric Helwig empire by the time I'm 40, that's what we got to do. All right? You got to go on Apple Podcast and say, listen to this shit. And I like when Eric talks in a British voice or does fake meditation or, you know, whatever. Whatever you like. I know. I got a couple bits out there. Floating in the ether. Yeah, shout out to Mike. Thanks for watching the show, buddy. Mike likes the meditation bits. That's the one bit he liked, and he was like, yeah, it helps me really like calm down. 
I'm like, dude, the whole point of the bit is that I don't stay calm. My, it sounds like Mike needs to meditate, and I'm acting like I didn't get his phone number and send him a meditation YouTube playlist, which I did. Mike, I know you got that playlist, buddy. Meditate, you son of a bitch. All right, enough. All right, let's get back to the point of the show, all right? I also uh, I want to say, while I'm giving shout-outs, the, uh, the team over at Living Off the Land Podcast, which I've now done twice. They helped me promote my shows. I went on their podcast about a week and a half ago, and then they came out to one of my shows. It was Jordan, Dan, and Teresa. Thank you guys very much for coming out. Now, when I say they came out to one of my shows, what I mean is I booked a show in Cleveland. They showed up. The show had been canceled for three weeks. Nobody told me. Now, I'm not going to – I don't name names on the podcast, didn't tell me the show was canceled, and then I had people show up to the show, and we just stood in a cold parking lot going, I don't think this show's going to happen. It was uh, a weird combination of anger and embarrassment. I haven't felt that for a long time. I can't think of the last time I did. But yeah, not a good look. But you know what? Jordan, Dan, and Teresa were very cool about it. And it was nice that they came out. You know, next time I come to Cleveland, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll book hilarities and then, you know, the club will burn down before they get there. And then, you know, that'll, that, that'll be that. That apparently is the, that, that's the pattern I'm setting up with these guys. Do your podcast, come out to my show. It doesn't happen. But even besides that, man, I still have had a great time out here in Ohio. That was the only show that I booked that <laughs> wasn't a show. All the other shows existed so far. Still got another couple club spots left before I'm out of town. It's just been awesome. It's been amazing getting back to do stand up. So I've been happy. But I wanted I want did want to give a shout out to them and check out their podcast, especially if you're in the Cleveland area. They do a lot of reviews on beers, which is, you know, obviously now very a uh, sad thing for me as I can't drink beer. Did you guys know I have celiac disease? Have I not mentioned it enough? <laughs> This is my first time, like, kind of being on the road with it. And, I mean, it's a full thing. Like, it's hard to plan out your day. Because, like, the, like, I, like, I drove, like, 30 minutes to go to a celiac place. Or a place that's, like, the owner, I guess, has celiac. Or, you know, who knows. has Just understands it. So when I called, they were like, yeah, yeah, we have a gluten-free fryer and all this stuff. And we can make a sandwich for you. And it's. I have like a little app on my phone now that tells me where the best gluten, the safest, really gluten free places are. It's so weird. Like when I'm choosing restaurants now, I'm not like, mm, what has the yummiest reviews? I'm always like, what won't kill me? What won't have me getting lowered into a shallow grave with my wife crying when I'm 48 years old? That is now how I make my determination. I could care less if your gluten free pizza is bland. <laughs> I just have to be happy that gluten-free pizza exists. Yeah, but I did go to this one place that was uh You know what I'll do? you know what I'll do cuz right around this time in the show I would go to a pre-planned bit. How about I do this? How about I do an ad for the place that I went? And that'll be the first pre-planned bit and that'll lead us into talking about Charlie Fry. Erie Street Kitchen in Kent, Ohio, which is very close to um, very close to Akron. That's where I went, Erie Street Kitchen. I had to drive to Kent. It actually wasn't that far, 30 minutes, like, because Akron and Kent, like, you got the Kent Golden Flashes and the Akron Zips, and they're, like, college rivals. So I didn't know that it was because they were so close to each other, but they're literally, like, right next to each other. Decent-sized, mid-level Ohio cities. Love it. Drove right by the Akron Stadium, by the way. The Zip Stadium looks beautiful. Man, made me want to watch a college football game real bad. I got to come back here during the season and check out some zips, some Mac football. You know, you guys know how I feel about Mac football. What I'm doing? I got to talk about the fucking restaurant. So I, I drove to Kent. You guys know Kent, Kent State, obviously famous for murdered students. Um, <laughs> also, there's a lot of roundabouts, and when you're driving to Kent from Akron, they're very big on roundabouts. Um. Anyway, so I went to this place, Erie Street Kitchen. I got the Nashville chicken with hush puppies. Oh, buddy boy, it was so good. They were it was great service. The sandwich was like spicy, but like not too hot. And it was kind of like an Asian theme where they I don't know what they call it where it's like it starts with a B, like bami. I think I'm saying that wrong, but there's like carrots and vegetables in the sandwich. It was so good, man. And the hush puppies were 
on point. They did give me like this kind of nasty mayo sauce, so the mayo sauce sucked. If you go there and get hush puppies, just get the ketchup. Don't let them just give you their shitty mayonnaise. This is the worst ad ever. I'm like, I should be like, the mayonnaise was tasty, but no, it wasn't. It was revolting. I didn't like, I, the first bite of the hush puppies were gross, but once I just, I just tossed that out, and I went bland hush puppies, which were good. They were seasoned well, so they could, you tasted, you could just go hush puppies, no condiment, and enjoy it. And then the sandwich was perfect. And they even did this. This was the fuck, this was the fucking coup de gras right here. The gluten buns they had, which usually are just like a slap in the face of anybody who likes bread. The lady goes, you know what? Our last shipment of gluten buns, they sent the wrong size, so they were a little bit smaller, so we just gave you like two small sandwiches. And I was like, I'm coming back forever. Two sandwiches? Oh, my God. It was great. I ate one, put the other one in the fridge, had it this morning for breakfast, a hot chicken sandwich at 8.30 in the morning. It was sweet, man. So Erie Street Kitchen, their mayo fucking sucks. But everything else is good. If you're driving to Kent, pour one out for the murdered students. Have yourself a Nashville hot chicken sandwich at Erie Street Kitchen. Erie Street, it can't be beat. <laughs> Great sandwich. All right. So now we'll act like we're coming out of the pre-planned bit music. doodle 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 doo 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 all right, Erie Street Kitchen, so good. Charlie Fry, the man of Akron. I'm so excited because I really did like Charlie Fry a lot as a quarterback. And I kind of had an idea in my head that he was like a hometown guy in Cleveland, but I, I didn't, I'd never researched him or anything. But that's the beauty of this show is I get to fill my head with nonsense, like where Charlie Fry is from. So this man is from Willard High School in Willard, Ohio. He's a football and basketball stand-up for the Crimson Flashes. Is that not a cool name for a high school team, the Crimson Flashes? Fucking sweet name. Yeah, he set 17 of the school's all-time football records. In his season, senior season, they go 10-2. and two. He's the uh, Northwest District Player of the Year and first-team All-Ohio Division Three team honors. The basketball team where he played, I guess he played basketball too. Was he 6'4 in high school? He probably played like power forward. You can pull 6'4 as power forward in high school. They went 22-3. and three. So he just crushed it in high school. Then he goes to college. And where does he go? I love this. Stays at home. Stays at home. Goes to University of Akron. The Zips, baby. Zipping it up. Zips in the Mac, you know, going against teams like Buffalo. Eastern Michigan, Central Michigan, Western Michigan. You get it. Teams, I would give you 100 bucks if you knew the team mascot name. Central Michigan, who's got it? Broncos, bitches. I think. I think it's the Broncos. I could be wrong. I'm not going to look it up. Charlie Fry broke 54 football records at his college career, during his college career, at University of Akron. He red shirts as a freshman. Then he... Starts four seasons at Akron. And unlike so many quarterbacks on this show, as we've talked about many times with shitty college numbers, Charlie Fry just keeps setting records. Let's look at this. Passes for 11,000 yards. That's an Akron record in his career. 64 touchdowns, also a record. 32 picks, a record. But you got to be good to be in the games long enough to throw 32 picks in college. And the team's like, okay, I mean, it's Akron. Like, I think they, like, have, like, about a 500 record with him as quarterback. But that's good considering, you know, the school historically in football sucks a donkey dick. So he was, he was like, the best player on, like, a pretty bad mid-level team. Could have left, by the way. They were talking about him leaving after his junior season. Came back because I guess they got a new coach. And they wanted to, like, kind of, like, do, like, a pro-style offense. They thought it would help his draft stock. And he, did. He, had a, he had a good senior season. I'm looking at it right now. 18 touchdowns, 8 picks, 63 completion percentage. It looks like his best season would have been his junior year, though. Look at this and at Akron. Dude throws for 3,500 yards, 22 touchdowns, 19 picks. Let's see that quarterback rating. 148.6. There you go, Charlie. Hell yeah. I love it, man. I fucking love college football <laughs> so much. 
I got to come back for an Akron Zips game, man. They got a beautiful stadium. I thought about breaking in the other night when I was drunk. I didn't do it. Cleveland Browns. Fry is selected with the third round, 67th overall pick. Hey, two more picks later would have been hilarious, but what can I say? Just missed out. 67th pick overall. And he plays a little bit in his uh, in his rookie season. I think his first start looks like it's week 13 against the Jaguars. Braylon Edwards, remember him from Michigan, I think? Catches two touchdowns from uh, Charlie Fry in his first start. Goes 2-3 and three in the 2005 season with the Browns. And then Fry is the starter, starting quarterback in the twenty uh, or 2006 NFL season. And yeah, look, he's not great in 2006. Okay, they go 4-9 in his starts. What is that, 13 games? He throws 10 touchdowns, 17 picks, quarterback rating of 72. What can you do? But the point is, is like he starts his, I think he could have developed. The dude had great mobility. Like when you watch Charlie Fry, like he can run around in that backfield. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Ben Roethlisberger. Like a less good Ben Roethlisberger. Less good? Oh, my God. I'm going to pause the show so I can go back to fucking third grade. Jesus Christ, less good? I'm just marking down the time in the podcast that I said less good so I can go back and edit that shit out. And everything I'm saying now, like if I edit that out, this little diatribe won't make sense. Less good? All right, now 2007, Fry... Beats out Derek Anderson and Brady Quinn. Who doesn't remember Brady Quinn in 2007? Remember that dude had, like, huge jacked arms, went to Notre Dame. That's what I remember about him. Notre Dame quarterback, huge jacked arms, and sucked. And Fry wins the starting quarterback job. And then in the first game against the Steelers, he goes 4 for 10 with a pick. And the whoever the Browns coach was, who cares, pulls Charlie Fry. Inserts Derek Anderson, and yeah, whatever. Derek Anderson remains the starter for the rest of the season and makes the Pro Bowl. Okay, great. Well, that means Charlie Fry would have made five Pro Bowls. Fuck you, Browns coach. I don't accept what happened to Charlie Fry in the 2007 season. You don't pull your starter after 10 pass attempts, all right? Not the pride of Akron, Ohio. All right, the Browns trade him then. Good. Get him out of there. If you're, if you're not going to respect his talent, somebody else will. So Charlie Fry goes to the Seattle Seahawks. He's the third-string quarterback there behind Matt Hasselbeck and Seneca Wallace. Makes one start in 2008 season. Yeah, they don't respect his talent either, it looks like, in Seattle. And then they don't re-sign him. He's an unrestricted free agent following the 2008 season. He signs with the Oakland Raiders. And then... Uh, Tom Cable, remember that name? Old Raiders head coach, this is in 2009. Names Fry, the starting quarterback. Bruce Gradkowski, uh, sorry, Bruce. Bruce Gradkowski gets injured. Jamarcus Russell gets sacked like 15 times <laughs> against the Redskins. The At the time, the Redskins. Uh, and so they're like, okay, Fry's our guy. Oh, I wonder if they said that a lot. That That has a little ring to it, Fry's our guy. They should have. A lot of pun opportunities with Fry. Um, he starts against the Broncos. And then get this. He gets injured in his first start against the Broncos in the fourth quarter. And who comes in to win the game? Jamarcus Russell. Dude, that's a, that's some bad luck for Charlie Fry, man. Like, the one time Jamarcus is going to look like he can actually do stuff is in the game that Charlie Fry gets hurt in. Come on. Annoying. Anyway, Fry comes back from his injury to play the next two weeks. Against the Browns and the Ravens. He threw three interceptions, but came back against the Ravens to throw a touchdown and no interceptions. So I don't know if that means that they won or not. I'm assuming they lost, but maybe they won that game. I could find out. I don't want to Google it. Who cares? Anyway, uh, then what happens next? Fry signs a one-year, $1.2 million contract with a third-round tender. I don't know what that means. On March 15, 2010. Then he gets injured. Gets placed on injured reserve, and he retires because he'd uh, had some in, some issues with health, right? So, look, I'm going to say this. Look, we look at his career stats here. Okay, 17 touchdowns, 29 picks, 4,000 passing yards, a passer rating hovering right around 70. 
which is my weight. Oh, no, it's a 69.7. He did get the 69. There you go, Charlie. Drafted 67th, but a quarterback rating forever, 69. So there we go. And uh, I love it, man. He's uh, he's a local hero, high school, college, and then with the Cleveland Browns. I wish it worked out with the Browns more. Fucking Derek Anderson. Andre the Giant motherfucker took Charlie. And he's only two inches taller. I think Derek Anderson's like 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Charlie Fry is 6'4". But those two inches make a big difference. I got a buddy who's 6'8". Or no, he's 6'7", and he's like, the average door height is 6'8". And he's like, if I was just one inch taller, I'd be nasty tall. Like, once you get to it, there's a certain height where, like, you better be playing basketball, otherwise your height is off-putting to people. Derek Anderson might be approaching that height. He's a little too tall. It's funny, my uh, my buddy, who's tall, we uh, we befriended each other in college. He said the reason he liked me is because everybody that he met would either be intimidated by his height or would make a joke about it. But the first thing I did was almost get in a fight with him at a party. <laughs> and he was like, I respected that you were ready to get your ass kicked by a six foot seven man <laughs> for spilling a drink on you. So yeah, yeah, I guess my my willingness to get my ass kicked uh, made me a friend for life. Anyway, uh, coaching career. Yeah, that's right. So Charlie Fry gets into coaching afterwards. After this, we will go to our pre plan bit. You guys are like I can't hear Eric talking for thirty minutes consecutively. Get us to Mandy Schmieder. I will. But we got to get into Charlie Fry's coaching career real quick. All right, so former teammate Kennard Lang, who was then the high school coach at Jones High School in Orlando, hires Fry as an offensive coordinator. Then before the 2013 season, they get hired for the same positions at a different high school in Florida. And then Fry goes to be a wide receivers coach in Ohio, so he's back home. Then these are the big moves. January 2019. Fry joins the staff at Central Michigan as the offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. Hell yeah. And then he gets a promotion for the uh, to the Dolphins. Now he's the quarterback coach for the Dolphins a year later. That means Central Michigan must have had a good season last year. Did they? I don't know. Let's find out. That's something I want to find out. Let's do Central Michigan football. 2019. Let's just see what their record was. I'll go quick here. Yeah, look at that. First in the MAC. There you go. Look at that. It pays off, man. You have a good season. The, the, the MAC is a nice little launching point for Charlie. I, I love Charlie Fry, man. This dude is going to be a head coach. I can feel it. So, yeah, he's with the Dolphins now. Personal life, he's had his high school number three retired, and it's on display at the, in the commons and on the field at his high school. And then his number five jersey and his last name is made, I told you guys this, Friday. Akron Mayor Don Plusquelic declared Friday, November 5th, 2007, Friday. Now, here's the thing. Is that like now every November 5th is Friday? I don't know. Maybe it was just that one day. But he should have a day every year in Akron that should be Friday. That's I'm going to go ahead and I'll, pet, I'll petition whoever is the mayor now to do that. And let's get to one more thing. With Charlie Fry before we head off to our pre-planned bit land. And this is a big thing. You guys know this. I've complained on it. Every single quarterback I've talked about on this show, I've sent a message to on Instagram or Twitter. Please come on my show. No responses. No responses from anybody. I sent a message to Charlie Fry. You know what he did? Put a little heart on the Instagram DM. Boom, baby. No response response. But Charlie Fry read my message and liked it with a heart, which tells me there's a small chance he's going to hear this podcast. So, anybody who knows Charlie Fry, he seems like an accessible guy. He gave my DMs heart likes on Instagram. Get at him when you're listening to this podcast. Send him the episode. Let's get Charlie Fry on the show. He can correct me on everything I'm getting wrong. I promise I won't ask him about uh, Kellen Winslow Jr. Ooh, goo boy. I'm not even going to get into it, but that guy was on the Browns, and it looks like he had a pretty fucked up CTE experience and did some horrible shit. So I won't ask you about that, Charlie, all right? We won't go anywhere near Kellen Winslow Jr. I'm getting it out of my system now. 
But come on the show, man. We'll have a good time. Charlie Fry, I slid into his DMs, and he liked the messages. I'm, I'm telling you, this podcast is moving up in the world. I'm getting likes on the messages. Sooner or later, I'm going to be getting polite no's. And eventually, six months from now, Craig Wheelahan's going to say, I'll come on the fucking podcast. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to get Craig Wheelahan. <laughs> Does anybody know Craig Wheelahan? It's a backup for the Chargers. You guys don't care. All right. Thanks for the likes, Charlie. It actually, uh, you know, like I said, like you got to celebrate the little things in life. One day I'll get one of these quarterbacks. I feel it. I'll tell you what I'm feeling right now. Some pre-planned bid action. Here we go. If you want something done right, you need to do it yourself. Unless it's telling your audience how to support your podcast, because that shit gets old real quick. I think you should outsource it. And that's what I've done. Welcome to My Friends and Family Plug My Show. These are real people with real reasons why you should support me. I hope you listen, I hope you hear, and I do hope you support. I'm Eric's friend Mandy, and I'm here to tell you how much I love how tenacious Eric is with his podcast, man. If he mentions ways to support his show as often as he complains about having celiac disease... The whole world will know soon enough to go to erichelwood.com, where you can follow his social media, join the newsletter, and check out his merch store. That's right, merch store. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast, wherever you're listening now, hit pause and do it. That way you'll never miss an episode, kind of how Eric doesn't miss opportunities to hijack conversations. For example, on a recent group Zoom, where I was opening up about the difficulties of juggling my job, my acting, and having two young children at home, Eric elbowed his way in and reminded us that he can't eat cake. So go to erichelwig.com to show your support for his show. And that's Eric with a CK, not just a C, which is the first letter in celiac. Eric has celiac disease. Uh, if you want to check out more of Mandy's stuff, you can. You can follow her at Mandy Schmieder on Instagram and Twitter. You can also go to her website, mandyschmieder.com, and check out her her. her. Her film. I am not calling Mandy a whore. It just I said her with a O instead of an E. So check out definitely not a whore, Mandy Schmieder. Check out her film, Unnatural, which is a really great uh, movie she made. So yeah, support that stuff. Again, MandySchmieder.com. Throw my friend a couple likes on social media. I love having my friends come on and just drop in for stuff. Actually, you guys know Chris Aurelio. He's uh, the co-creator of my death character. He was just randomly in close to where I was in Ohio. Um, I think he was like hanging out in Pittsburgh, like just doing a little like cross country, get me out of the East Coast drive, hang out. And uh, he came and saw one of my shows last night. So I was actually hanging out with my former roommate, my former creative partner slash writing partner. At a comedy show, talking shit in the back. You know, there's there's really no other way to say it other than you guys have listened to me slowly slip into madness. So, yeah, I'm just happy to be out, man. And, like, it's the truth is, is, like, it's been raining in Akron the whole time I've been here, and I couldn't care less. Akron is the greatest place in the world to me right now. I literally saw the Akron football stadium. I almost cried just because I was like, they'll be playing football there in a few months. Like, I was so happy People will be in the stands. It's like it's coming back. We're coming back. Positivity, people. Get ready. Get ready to burn your mask. We're getting there. I cannot wait to be done with this crap. I mean, I went to a birthday party when I was back home in an unnamed location. I went to a birthday party for a friend, and there's just people getting drunk together, hanging out. Some people were still wearing their masks. Some people weren't. It was great. It was amazing. It, it was it was such a fun birthday party, too, because it's like, you know, we're all getting a little bit older now. Nobody's in their college years anymore. You know, early to mid-30s. You, you don't bounce back from drinking like you used to. But uh, the birthday boy got up and gave one of, like, a drunk speech to the to the group. Everybody was cheering him along. He wasn't in a position to give a speech. <laughs> with his inebriation level. It was just so much fun. It's like, that's what, I forgot what fun was like for a little bit. 
you know, me and Liz have been having fun in the house, like doing little bits and stuff. But like, you, you're just sit, at the at some point, you're just sitting in a house. You know, I am an extrovert person. I get my energy from hanging out with other people, so it's it's been rough. You know, just getting back to it, it's been something else. So it just an awesome time. I think just my excitement for stand up has kind of over taking what would what is usually I get a little lonely on the road. Um but I haven't even felt that really. Like I've you know, I'm staying in this I got an Airbnb outside of the comedy club where I'm where I'm performing this week. And uh it was a good Airbnb Airbnb. I mean it was cheap, but it's like it's in the it's in the attic of a three story house and they've kind of like retrofitted it. It's got like a very low ceiling because it's probably just an attic. I don't think it's meant to be like a a full living thing but they turned it into one and it's it's nice you know i feel like i got my own space i did mess up uh i was like when i was coming in it gets super dark up here because it's the attic so the 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 windows are like low (laughs) i don't don't know how to say it other than like it just doesn't get great light so like when i walked in it was dark so i was kind of like feeling on the wall for the um for the light and i guess i like i hit this thing i didn't know what it was and then that night my the bedroom's like ninety five degrees. Like I'm sweating. I'm like waking up in the. I'm like, do I have like sleep apnea? Like what's? <laughs> did I develop it in one night? It's because the room is like super hot. And so I write to the people the next day. I'm like not too douchey, but was like, you know, the 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 temperature in the bedroom is really unbearable. That you need an AC in here. You have an AC in like the living room area, but the bedroom needs the AC if it's going to get that hot. Like I can feel the heat coming in. And they were like, you control your own temperature. There's a thermostat by the door. And I realized when I'd come in the night before when I was feeling for the light fixture, I had just moved with my finger the thermostat all the way to 90, like as hot as you can make (laughs) the temperature in a room. I just did that with my hand. So I was like, whoops. And I, uh, you know, flipped the AC down to make it 58 degrees. Been uh, shivering while I go to sleep every night since. But it is a nice Airbnb. They got a nice uh, setup. They did the thing where, like, there's a desk, and then right above the desk, they put the date, like a little blackboard. May 3rd, Monday, welcome Eric with my name spelled correctly. I'm like, that that, that, that just shows me that, you know, they've been in the place. Although they did fuck something up. They, there's another thing that they fucked up at the Airbnb, which is that I'm in bed. No, the, no, wait. I got here. Yeah, it was like the morning – it was I. I was in bed, and I hear somebody knocking. But I guess they've been knocking for a little bit, and then I hear the fucking door open downstairs. So like when the door opens, you got to walk up a stair, and so I hear somebody knocking, and then I hear the door open, the creaking of stairs, like a human being walking up to murder me. And I go, "Who's that?" And I put a little bass in the voice, you know, more like, "Who's that?" Like that, that kind of. And the lady goes, oh, it's me. I didn't know you checked in yet. I was just putting some toilet paper in the bathroom. I was like, why don't you leave the toilet paper by the door and send me a text? You're going to walk into an Airbnb after the time when someone's supposed to check in? She's like, I don't believe in, like, ghosts. But now, like, as soon as I turn the lights off in this place, I'm just waiting to get murdered. Now that I know someone can walk in. Well, what I did is, like, I did, I realized I didn't lock the, the deadbolt. Now I've been locking that deadbolt because I'm like, I don't want this fucking lady walking in at any time if i'm not paying attention there's like a human being standing in my living room i'm not expecting that's fucking horrifying so yeah that was not good i'm still gonna give you know there's a pandemic i'm not gonna give them a bad it takes a special type of asshole to give somebody like a negative yelp review or a negative airbnb thing when like nobody has a job so they're gonna get they're gonna get their five stars no matter what but you guys know they messed up a little bit you can't walk in after the check-in time. You got a text. Yeah, I'm like I'm like in an addict, hoping nobody walks in. It's dark. I'm getting like the real Anne Frank experience in this Airbnb. Like it's, I'm just saying it was like it, it, it's unsettling. And and there is a thing too. I will say, I don't believe in ghosts. Okay, I don't believe in ghosts. Except the ones that haunt the places that I stay at Airbnbs. It feels like every Airbnb that I stay in has a couple ghosts. 
You ever feel that? Like, it's stupid. It's just you just watch too many horror movies. Like, that first night when it, when I had unknowingly turned the heat on, I was like, it's, it was, at, at some point I woke up at, like, 4 a.m. I was like, I just want, tried to go sleep on the couch because it was cooler in the living room because there was an A.C. blowing right on you. And so I'm sleeping in there. But the way I'm sleeping, I'm, like, facing towards the staircase that, like, lets into the living room. And they have, like, a... They have like a little cloth linen thing that kind of like separates the staircase from the entrance. And there's a window on the staircase, so there's a little bit of light coming in, so you can kind of see the space behind the curtain, but it's like uh, silhouetted almost. And it's maybe because it's like I'm sweating, it's 4 a.m., I'm tired, I feel like I'm in the middle of a fever dream, but I can swear, like if I look carefully enough, if I just kept my eyes on it, for like five seconds, I can see like the bony fingers of the mummy or something like coming in to murder me. If you're in a new place and there's anything that's even kind of creepy looking, you're just like, I will be murdered. I will be murdered. This is the Amityville horror. It's happening right now. I'm not proud of this, but I turned around so I couldn't see it. Because I was like, I, I keep like, I'm closing my eyes to go to sleep, but I'm really just closing my eyes to be like, if the mummy is coming to kill me, I, I'd i rather it just get me while I'm sleeping or pretending to sleep. I don't want to have the moment of realizing it's coming right before it it gets me. I did watch, we did watch The Mummy before I left for Akron. The Mummy's fun. It's kind of like, uh, there's like a thing with action movies I think that got made late 90s, early 2000s. Like, I don't know if you guys ever saw Stargate with uh, James Spader and Kurt Russell. But the pacing on those movies is just like, it's so lightning fast. It's like Hollywood producers in the 90s just like, maybe they just thought the entire audience were doing lines of coke right before the movie started. But they just... They don't let anything sit. Like, main characters die, and they're like, we'll avenge him. da 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 Off to the next thing. Like, nothing ever lays. There's never a moment for the audience to kind of, like, process how they feel about a death or a big character reveal or some sort of twist. It's just, like, shot out of a cannon at that speed the whole time, and then the movie ends with the explosion, and that's it. And The Mummy is 100% that type of movie. Like, the emotional development of the characters is zilch. The action <laughs> the action sequences and the scenes setting up the action are at the exact same breakneck pace. The Mummy was great, and I didn't realize it was going to give me the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> I was going to get the willies in my Airbnb thinking of uh, Arnold Oslo- Voslo's or is that the guy's name? How do I know the guy's name because it's so weird. Arnold Vuslu, I think, is the actor that played the mummy. And I only know him because he also played Habib Marwan in 24. And we were also watching 24. So I got like a heavy Arnold Vuslu acting chunk over the last three weeks. And he's, he's, he's two villains. Like he's a villain in 24. He's a villain in... Uh, Obviously, he's the the mummy. But his mummy villain is, I'd say, like, like I listened to him in an interview. And he was going like, well, when I played Imhotep, uh, I was motivated by love. And when I was playing the terrorist, I was like, I just need to get this shit done. (laughs) I thought that was the most hilarious way to, (laughs) that was the most hilarious way to describe being a terrorist trying to detonate a nuclear weapon in the United States. It's just be like, I just had to do it. And I like it because it's like, to me, that that's just honesty as an actor. Like, all, all actors will be like, oh, you know, I had to really think about what it would be like to live in this place and where is this guy from? And Arnold Vuslu was like, I got an angry look on my face and I was like, this needs to happen. That's great because here's the thing. He's supposed to be the foil for Jack Bauer. And Jack Bauer, like Kiefer Sutherland's playing Jack Bauer for eight seasons. You think every scene, Kiefer Sutherland's like, my wife was... Murdered in season one, I need to use that as my inspiration. No, sometimes he's like, just look angry, you love America, go. And Arnold Vuslu knew, I'm probably saying his name wrong, whatever it is. The guy that played Habib Marwan slash Imhotep knew, just look angry. Look angry, 
and determined to achieve your mission, and that's all you need as a foil for Jack Bauer. Like, it's it's not rocket science. I like honest actors. You know, like, not method actors. I can remember Jem- Jennifer Tilly was, like, talking about having sex scenes in Hollywood. And she was like, it's my favorite part. It's like you're getting to fuck somebody and it's not cheating. <laughs> Nobody in Hollywood will say that. They all act like it's uncomfortable. I loved it. I was like, you go, Jennifer Tilly. Tell them how it is. Tell them how you really felt about being in Bride of Chucky. (laughs) What else is she in? She was in Bound. I like that movie a lot. We won't get into it. But she was in the movie Bound, Bride of Chucky. I guess I just know her from the Chucky movie. But Jennifer Tilly's been in a lot of other stuff, too. Jennifer Tilly. You guys are really seeing how slow my typing is. It's because I only have one hand because I'm holding the microphone. Usually uh, usually when I'm doing the podcast, I got my little home set up. I got a, a mic stand, so I got, I got two hands free. And here we go. We're looking at Jennifer Tilly. Let's just get to her. Movies, movies. All right. Seven Days to Vegas. I saw that one. Cult of Chucky, Bride of Chucky. Yeah, okay, we got the Chucky movies. What else we got here? Seed of Chucky. I don't remember Seed of Chucky. It looks like the Chucky movies are like the big movies that she made. I'm not seeing a lot. Stuart Little. Okay, that's a big one. She she did a lot of voice acting. Why do I just feel like Jennifer Tilly's been in more movies than are showing up here? Yeah, I haven't seen any of these movies. I guess I know her from Chucky. Okay, let's be real. I know her from Bound. That's the movie I know her from. (laughs) I'm keeping it. I'm trying to keep it real with you guys. All right. I, she was on it's Gary Shandling show. Okay. There we go. Let maybe her TV shows. Family Guy. Yep. She was a voice on Hey Arnold. Wow. Frasier. Out of practice. Oh yeah, she's Darlene in Modern Family. I knew that. Okay, so she's been like yeah, she's been working a lot. Jennifer Tilly's had a hell of a career. Look at this work. She's been working consistently. Since 1983. That is no small feat. That And for someone who speaks their mind and is like, is willing to say sex scenes are the best part about being an actor and to still be working for, at this point, when I mean, we're coming up on 40 years for JT. Good for her, man. I, I, I respect the hell out of that. All right, I think I've covered everything I need to cover for this show. I mean, I think you guys are now fully, like, up to... You're up to date on the happenings. I want to thank everybody for listening. As always, I guess I got to say this now because uh, usually I've, I've got more breaks in the show to remind myself to say it. But support the show. If you can, Apple Podcasts, five-star uh, reviews are always great. If you are liking the show, consider the merch store. Man, I've had a couple people buy stuff at the merch store and give things away as gifts to other people that listen to the podcast. I tell you what, nothing makes a birthday sweeter than uh, a T-shirt from a podcast that someone doesn't listen to. All right? And and by the way, Joe Schappa, shout out to uh, a friend of the show that did a a bit for us not long ago where he made fun of my merch store and said, I'm like, oh, do do I have some – sentence in there that's like an inside joke that only Hellwig heads would know. Some dumb thing like, the beaver's always awake on Tuesday. I don't have any of that. I just have the name of the show and my face. And I told the artist, his name's Eric Owusu. Anybody that's looking to hire a graphic design artist, you should give Eric Owusu a shout. But uh, when he was designing me on the thing, I said, it's me, but I weigh 20 less pounds in way better shape. (laughs) He was like, I got you, man. And so now I only look like a slightly out of shape dude (laughs) on the T-shirts instead of what I really look like, which is the largest I've ever been in my life. But we'll end on a positive note because I'm feeling positive. That weight's going down, baby. Yeah, that's right. I dropped some serious l age in the last month. It's always easiest. Like when you stop eating like a monster, you always drop. You can drop 10 pounds pretty quick by just drinking water and not actively hurting yourself. So I'm in that I'm still in that phase of just like it's it's coming off quick and easy. 
But, you know, once you get past that first 10 or 15, you know, you really got to start committing to the workouts. Really got to go for the celery juice. So I'm going to do that and try to turn this train around. I was driving at full speed straight into hell, but no longer. All right, full uh, about face. Is that what you say when you're turning directions? I don't know. My father was in the military. I feel like I heard about face a lot, but I don't really know what it means. It feels like a thing that's been shouted at men in uniform on a field as they twirl bayonets. <laughs> if my father was listening to this podcast, he he would be shitting out of his eyes in anger as I just bastardize every phrase that he used to use while training men to defend the country. And I'm like, yeah, they go on the field and they twirl their bayonets and they... <laughs> I need to show more respect for the troops on this show. You know who always shows respect for the troops? Charlie Fry. Friday in Akron. <laughs> November 5th, 2007. If I had a time machine, if I had a time machine and I could choose to go back and, and you know, kill Hitler or experience Friday, I don't want to tell you what I would choose. But I don't really want to kill somebody. Also, with the Hitler stuff, it's like you don't have to kill him. You know, you could just go back and, like, you know, not let his parents have sex would just be as easy. This feels like a hack joke, but you get it. Why does everybody want to kill a baby? I feel like once you're there, you'd be like, oh, fuck, this is the way I did it? There's a million other ways to do this. I didn't have to murder. I didn't have to smother a baby. I could have just cock-blocked Dolph Hitler for a night, and it would have been fine. Was his father's name Dolph? I don't know. I just don't know. Guys, thank you for listening to the podcast. I hope you had a good time, and we will uh, we'll be back at it in two weeks, probably with a guest, probably with some more pre-planned bits. But like I said before, throw it in an Apple podcast review. Let me know what you want to hear on the next episode. Hey, maybe that's how it happens, huh? Interact with the show. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Michael Jordan. Oh, fuck, no, that's uh, that's uh, Wayne Gretzky. God damn it. I can't fucking end on that. I can't end on misquoting. <laughs> but whatever, uh, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Sounds that could just as easily be Michael Jordan. But it happens to be Wayne Gretzky. It's not like the quote is like, I'm a six foot four white guy that plays hockey for the LA Kings. And then I said, Michael Jordan. Okay, the quote from Gretzky could just as easily be Jordan. So I don't feel that bad. I think it wasn't it. I think it was also Michael Jordan that said, hey, Republicans buy ice skates too. <laughs> That's a good way to end the podcast. Thank you for listening. Support the show, erichelwig.com, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening to the show. If you'd like to support us, visit erichelwig.com, where you can follow on social media, join the newsletter, visit the merch store, or email me directly. If you're on Apple Podcasts or iTunes, rate us five stars and write a review. If not, just subscribe from your preferred podcast platform. Lastly, if you know someone who would enjoy our content, please tell them about the show. That's erichelwig.com for all things backups, and we'll see you on the next episode.